happy 49 Republic anniversary. You know, 29 years ago, I had the glorious opportunity of hoisting the golden arrowhead atop of Mount Engano. Wow. It was extremely cold. We tried to sing, <laughs> oh beautiful Guyana, but we were shivering. One of the regrets I have, however, at that hoisting of the flag is that I have one blurred photograph. And uh, we didn't have video recording and all of that. And you know, as you look at choices, one of the things that I am blessed about is the young men and women who produce this program. Our cameramen, yes. those who do the mixing, and even our makeup um, ladies who attempt to fix our physical features so that we can look presentable to you. Please so introduce today, them. Um, I want to thank um, Anthony Foster. I want to thank um, Mark Stevens. I want to thank Joshua David. I want to thank Martin Watson. And I want to thank even the two, uh, we call them makeup artists, Shanet Lee and um, Moeva Mason. And one person that is very important to ensure that our syntax are correct, I want to thank teacher Evelyn Gulliver, who is one of our pastors. So today we want to welcome you again to the program, and we want to say again, happy 49 in the um, Republic anniversary. We are so proud today to have these young people with us, yeah. and it seems as though, not seem, they know <laughs> what they're about and where they're going. And if we can, as a team on choices, the elders and the youths can make it, then Guyana can fully make it. Yes, sir. Yes. One of the things in Guyana that we need to uh, continue and to develop and to encourage young people to do is not just to, to build, but to maintain and to sustain. Because Guyana, like every nation, has a vision to develop and to grow. But we also have to incorporate in that vision the importance of sustainability. And we spoke about a, a Shalom community earlier, and that is one of the things that uh, the, the shalom, a Shalom community uh, fosters, and it helps to, to sustain growth and development. So as we cast a vision of growth and development, which is important, I think we need to uh, also focus on the importance of building relationships as the elders with the youths so that they will see a model and they're able to sustain that growth and development. Some people are about. suggesting that with this influx of a whole set of money, that will transform, that in itself would transform this country. I don't know that I agree with that. Um, it's not just money that will bring transformation. Yeah. Yeah. What I would like us to do is to, you see what family, what family does every single day in this country is invest in their children, their offspring. Mm -hmm. And here you have, you, you, you may have a baby boomer who might be mother and father. They never went to high school. <laughs> They, they, they never, they never darken the door of a school with their presence. But you hear them saying to the picnic, you got to go to school. You, you got to learn, you know? Mm -hmm. yes. And the whole question is, we are seeing some, here, we have to abandon this notion that money will bring a transformation. Money in itself cannot bring yeah. a transformation. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be intentional yeah. about the shalom um, community that we are seeking, where, you know, the good life will roll out. People have to uh, be intentional yeah. about rearing, about caring, about instructing, about rules, about orders, there's some people who don't want no rules. Mm -hmm. They want no order, they just want to live. And we, we need to be able to point them to our monuments and point them to um, these structures. This is where we came from yeah. yes. in, in this yeah. season after 49 years. You know, I don't want to go see Columbus, mm -hmm. where his statue is and all them kind of yeah. thing. I want to be able to see the the, the monuments of our, our heroes, or yeah of founding fathers and mothers, people who struggled, 
And we mustn't besmirch them and, and say we don't need those kinds of things. We need those things. Young people need to be motivated by these very powerful pictures of, of our, our past leaders. You know, God is a, God is a relational God. Amen. And um, he has created us to be relational as human beings. And wherever there is a brokenness, or wherever there's brokenness in terms of our relations, we don't see any prosperity, we don't see any blessing, we don't see any movement. And, and that is because we are acting in contravention of how God expects us, us to behave. And so I think the time has come, and now, is, is, it is, now it's, it's, we are at a critical juncture in our history where our leaders and would-be leaders need to engage in introspection and self-examination uh, we need to ask ourselves if how we are behaving, how we are conducting ourselves, if, 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 if it is the good for the good of this nation. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that when we look at the different kinds of um, relations that we have with, with leaders, you get a sense that, you know, we, 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 we can't go very far. I remember, um, you know, just coming back from Barbados, CXE, one guy said, a professor said, man, you all got gold and diamond. And, and he, apparently some people know more about what we have more than what yeah, we ourselves, yeah, what yeah, we yeah. have. And uh, one of the reasons I believe that why we have not been able to rise to that level, it is because we are not building relationships. Yeah, Instead, yeah. we are imploding. We are fighting against one another rather than coming together. Um, I, I've learned about the whole concept of collective impact. You could, could, can you imagine when a group of people who have different skill sets, we heard about skill, decide, look, we're coming together and working in, in one accord for the development of this nation. Guyana will prosper, and we need to start moving in that direction. You know, you're my song, friend, you know. you're my neighbor, you sing you're the my song, brother. Sano, I you want to friend, build this brother. land that we love to be. <laughs> this family thing, we need to work together. So whoever penned that song, I want to build this land that belongs to me. Land on this land, on this land to build our economy. As we think it, let's talk it, let's work it. So Guyana will benefit from it. You know this building that I'm looking at, this young man here to my right is a special young man. Yes, he is. He's not a tout. Nor a bat. <laughs> he is beautifully <laughs> educated. But what I like about him, he ain't going seeking for no job. Mm. I think that's the problem we have in Guyana. Too many people get an education and going to get a job. And then ask them a few mornings after, what happened? You ain't working the No, they can't pay me. And you can't pay yourself. <laughs> I don't know that he's making any money now, but he is hoping to build his own empire, let me call it that. Tell us something. Em empire sounds good, I like that. <laughs> I like that branding. But um, on that note, young people, if you want to, you see the leaders that are there right now. When I was younger, I never understood why some persons do things one way when there are different other opportunities or different other ways that you could do it. For example, right now, as simple as it is, if you want to know the definition of a word, you ask a child, what would a child do? Oh. Right on the phone, search for it. What would an older person do? Yes, Both in the dictionary. Yes, right. right? Both of them are actions that are, have the same goal in mind, but one is more efficient than the other. So the importance for young people right now is to engage and influence the commanding heights of our economy. So it's a lot of fancy words there, but essentially what I'm saying is, if you want to see change in Guyana, you get into leadership positions and you bring your influence to those circles. And I can give some personal experience with that. So for example, I saw that the private sector in Guyana needed uh, a younger influence. They needed some more Christian influence within their organization. So I took the initiative to join the, the George Young Chamber of Commerce. Why? All around me, you have big people from large companies, real mega-sized corporations, and then you have me. Right? <laughs> but when you look at the kind of things that they're developing and the kind of initiatives that they're launching and planning to bring to Guyana and how they're negotiating different international deals, you're able to gain a perspective. So when you speak, you're not speaking from a point of ignorance. You're speaking from a point of information and you're speaking from a point of, of dominance when you're, when you're speaking. Another thing, so 
get into whichever ministry, whatever you're interested in. For example, I have an interest in the creative arts. So what I did, I saw uh, a bulletin. That's an old people word. Um, I saw a message <laughs> from uh, the Ministry of Foreign, Foreign Trade a while ago. And what they were, Foreign Affairs. And what they're trying to do within some areas is to align Guyana's strategic policy with the Caribbean uh, strategic policy for international trade. And one of the sectors that they're focusing on is the creative sector. And they even set up a creative industries task force. So I'm on the task force because not that I want to... I want power or anything like that. You it's about influence, yeah. bringing kingdom influence, mm -hmm. and ensuring that these systems aren't only designed to benefit certain people, but it's designed to benefit people of Guyana and to bring Guyanese yeah. culture and Guyanese people to the world at large. Martin, so yeah. get in, get onto that stage, Ma elevate, go to the next level. Nobody's stopping you. What's stopping you? <laughs> the mind, the, the mind, probably the mind. The sea transformation cannot come except by the renewing of the mind and the scriptures are clear about that and as martin spoke about influence i always love the phrase when i'm reminded that salt is salt oftentimes young people do step up oftentimes we head in with good intentions to influence different arenas different ministries different spheres but we lose our saltiness and we cannot afford to do that you see joseph um the events of joseph are a prime example he was surrounded um, by pagan but he maintained his saltiness that's why the scripture admonishes us, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. We must have a place where we can saltify. <laughs> <laughs> like no? the yeah? like the and then go out to be influencers and yeah. effect transformational mm. change. It is, that's a very important concept. Yeah. As you attempt to be uh, an influence in, and to bring transformation to your community, to where you work, always be aware that they are those who want to maintain the status quo. Yeah. Always be aware of this. Sure. And they are the ones, if you want to look at the scriptural reference, mm -hmm. you look at the Sambalats and the Tobias. Wow. They have vested interests mm -hmm. in things remaining the same yeah. Yeah. because mm -hmm. that's how they make their living. That's how they are able to come to the top at every time. Mm -hmm. So you young men and women, whenever you become an innovator, you must know in your head, you have a target on your back. Yeah. And Sam Ballot and Tobiah, they're, they're coming up. after you. Mm -hmm. But guess what? They're aiming at your back. Yeah. You will razzle-dazzle them with speed yeah. and, and with brilliance. That after a while, they will become your disciples. But wow. you have to be strong enough to be able to, to persist and insist. Because we need disruptive innovators at this time in order to make the... Jesus, when Jesus came, right? The people who loved him the most were the scribes and the Pharisees. He, what we call disruptive innovation, he came and disrupted the entire way people saw God. And the people who controlled that concept before, the scribes and the Pharisees, said, we got to get this man. And we are, we are going through a stage right now of rebuilding, restoration, all those words come to mind when I think about this country. And to continue with the story, that, that was the opposite side, but to look at Nehemiah, how he yeah. built and they, they came together and built this wall. The thing is that we all, sometimes we believe that, oh, I have what, what, whatever I, my ideas and all of this, it's, it's just me. I got to, me, 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 me. The point is that we got to go together. We got to move away from division. We got to move away from, from the whole, oh, I and me to we. And yeah. uh, we got to understand that there is a difference between group work and team work. Wow. And if we want to move forward, Guyana is a team. If we we got to look at this country as a team. And with rebuilding the walls, some persons, the, the world, sometimes we believe that we are, it's all about us. But I want to encourage our young people to stop with the whole separation and segregation. It doesn't matter the race. It doesn't matter which, which color of the skin. It doesn't matter. We all for one purpose, one goal, and one aim, which is to build, rebuild the nation. And in order to rebuild the nation, we got to move away from group work, and we got to come together as a team, and we got to work towards establishing and rebuilding this nation. As you, as you, as you yes, we need to get up 
and get going. We need to find our purpose and be determined to accomplish that goal no matter the circumstances around us. And it doesn't have to be in oil and gas. For example, I'm a medical school student. And yes, there's going to be benefit with the oil and gas. It may not be directly, but I know for sure there will be a transformation in our sectors with the influx of the money from the, yes. the income from oil and gas. Yes. And so we need to benefit from that income. We can't allow foreigners to come in and reap mm -hmm. what we have sown. And as a result, we need to get qualified, be more determined. Don't let anyone stop you from accomplishing your dream. And look at this and wonderful thing, collaboration we have here. Different generations. I mean, I think yeah. you raised that issue just now. We have the, the baby boomers. Present. <laughs> we have the Generation Next. Yes, sir. <laughs> we have Generation Xers and we have the Millennials. And here we are, all together, putting our ideas. Everyone bringing their own little perspective on things. We, we spoke about the whole idea of being able, being willing to change, um, being able to move away from the status quo. That's a wonderful way to do it when you have the different generations because different generations see, see things differently. Mm -hmm. And you get it, you, your perspective will, will be changed. So here, yeah. we can actually be a nice little model because look, we disrupted our usual program mm -hmm. and yeah. we've included some others. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that what some, something that Guyana can do? What you well? surely we can what do is What you surely... wanted to say? <laughs> um, I, was think, I was thinking in building, in building this nation, human resources is very important. Um, I'm Kizia Gordon, a medical doctor by profession. Sure. Uh, something that Nebuchadnezzar noticed is that human resources is very important. Um, Daniel, he took Daniel, he took Shadrach, he took Misha, excellent, excellent. he took Abednego, he took them the out Negro. of <laughs> <laughs> he took them out of their their land and he transferred them into his. Why? Because he he realized that human resources are what make a nation. So we need to invest in our human resources, and these human resources need to be developed. The young people of this nation need to stand up, and they need to, to take what is theirs. We need to stop sitting down and waiting for it to be given to us, mm -hmm. and advance towards the goal. So in this, in this atmosphere, as a young person, I want to speak to this nation and say we bind the spirit of fear. Yeah. You see, fear has a lot of withholding power, yeah. and a lot of young people, we're, we're afraid. I can tell you personally, there are ideas I may have had, and I've spoken to young people, and they have ideas too. But you're shivering in your boots. <laughs> that, is where, that, that is where it is always great to have a mature support, a yeah. mental leader who's been there. So you want to worry about that? Let's go. But even beyond that, in Christ, there's no spirit of fear. There's the spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. I want to follow up on the points made by um, Dr. Kezia and uh, my good friend, LaShonda. Um, they talked about the importance, the significance of education and why young people should really position themselves, particularly as Guyana is now about to move into another dimension in terms of income. And uh, lots of persons are, we are hearing the concept of oil and gas and everybody seem to, um, seems to want to study oil and gas and to go in that direction. But I want to say to you that whatever position you are in, whatever uh, area, whatever field, whether it's an economist, whether it's a, a doctor, a, a lawyer, you need to continue in your particular area because where we're going, the, 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 the income has the capacity to affect all other areas and therefore there will be need for persons in the various professions. I've learned that from my good friend, Dr. Mark Bino, maybe he might be listening to this program, because they, everyone said, no, I want to go and study island guard, but you need to study exactly what you're studying right now. Agriculture. Because, agriculture, because yes, the agriculture industry will be impacted. More people will come, food will have to be provided. Hotels also yeah. would have to, will, will, will take off. And so it is very important for us young people um, you know, sometimes oh, who's we... A, who's it? Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm included. It is very, it is very important <laughs> that, that we remain steadfast and, uh, and that we study because what will happen if we're not mindful? People will be imported to yeah, do different yeah, jobs. Yeah, and what yeah. we don't want is to take Guyana and make Guyana another person's or another nation's land. This is our land and we must ensure that Thank you, Mr. Chief Education Officer. I, 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 
I've been trying to make this point a while ago. Long time. <laughs> a long time ago. And thanks for the opportunity. Because um, we seem to be fascinated over the resources we have. Indeed, we are a resource rich environment. But we are not spending sufficient time and energy in developing human capital. I think Martin made that observation sometime back um, when, we, when we did another recording. And it is so necessary at all levels, both at the family level, the community level, and at the national level, deliberate efforts being made to develop our human capital. Because without doing that, like you just said, foreigners' human capital elsewhere will come to benefit from the resources. We can no longer just have gold and di diamond and oil. And all that happens is that you, you extract these stuff and you send them overseas. Little benefit to the place where it actually has come from. So we have to, in our policy, in our structural thinking, develop an understanding of our human capital is important. The attorney, the attorney has a um, submission to make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in addition, piggybacking on both pastors and the pastor Sano, I would like to challenge young people, especially those who are still in high school, even in primary school, you could start from a very tender age because they knew what they wanted to do from a very young age. You don't only have to select mainstream areas to specialize in. Everybody wants to be a lawyer. Everybody wants to be a doctor. And there's so many other avenues. Look, the oil is coming and we are not ready. We have to import human capital to get work done. See, it tells me that we have not been preparing is properly for what is to come. And I know a lot of people sometimes when you inform them, this is what you want to do, the first thing they like to say is, but Guyana doesn't really offer this um, particular area. I have a friend, she's now studying in Jamaica, and she's going to become an actuary. And as far as I'm aware, the Caribbean doesn't have many of those, Wait but though. she's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> she is going to come back to Guyana, and she is going to be maybe the second in Guyana who has this area of expertise. So you know what's going to happen to her with this oil situation and everything else that will be coming as a result of it? She will be making a lot of money. And it's not just to stress the material gain, but imagine the contribution and the way she is now going to open the floodgates because now other people will be able to, to think, you know what, I've always been considering this area, but I didn't know it was possible. So I'm challenging young people not only to consider mainstream popular areas that you're aware of, but you delve and see what you like, what your passions are, and you go for it. Can you tell me what is an actuary? Unless I go away thinking that the actuary is a money milker. But actuary, actuary of science basically speaks to high-end mathematical qualifications, scientific. It goes in depth. Yeah. Um, it's used a lot to determine statistical probabilities and outcomes. Yeah, it's it's high-end stuff. It's a scientist of sort, a mathematical yeah. scientist, in and, essence. And how we, how, yeah. we, how, we, how we would want to start this entire process, <laughs> I think, again, um, where we begin is in changing our mindset. I think mm -hmm. as young people, we need to stop sitting back and thinking about, okay, maybe things in Guyana are a little rough. Things hard. You're on your job. You've, you studied all your years. You go, you get a nice job. You go with all your enthusiasm on the job. Uh, you have persons in any work situation. You have, you have a lot of, of, of tenseness, a lot, a, a lot of, of frustration there. So the first thing you think about is, okay, maybe I can go somewhere in the Caribbean, somewhere, some, some far place where I can get more money and seemingly better working conditions. I think as a young person, what we should be doing, even as you study, when you study, look at yourself as, let, let's say, as a spike. You, you're, going to, you're going to these countries, you, you're, going, you're going there to study with the intent to come back to Guyana and help develop Guyana. So you're going there, you're getting the, you're using their infrastructure, using their resources, and you, you, you're developing yourself. Now with the intent to stay there and help them to develop their countries further, but you're coming back to Guyana and yeah. you're coming back here to help us to, to develop. So you may see a situation, man, this is happening this way, I don't like it like this. You sit back and you're thinking, but 
man, Gano, you think about university again, mm -hmm. university again, and offering this, and they want to do this, and then you just sit back and relax, like, man, well, for. And then you're just looking, mm -hmm. probably, to, you, you, you find people start thinking about ways in which, whether legal or illegal, to probably go to the U.S. and, and think that they'll be able to have a better That's life. Wonderful. So, I, in, instead, of, instead of that kind of thinking, instead of the, let's call it the sellout kind of, of thinking to Guyana, <laughs> we're encouraging you more and more, probably should be, think of yourself more of a spy. You're going to these countries, you're going, you're seeing what they have. You want to know how they're doing it, you study there, you develop yourself, and always with the intent to come back to Guyana and help develop This Guyana. is This is really excellent. And as we're talking about becoming, um, choosing, to become an, an, an influence. The fourth estate, as they are called in the developed world, meaning journalists, journalism, the fourth estate, they're very powerful people. In this country, they could set the mood of the nation by just reading a newspaper, by just listening to a, 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 an electronic news thing. These people, if they want to sink somebody or sink something, they can just use 30 seconds and do it uh, with a camera yeah, yeah. or print, get somebody yeah, to print sure something, do an editorial. Yeah, yeah. And they are the fourth estate, you know. You know, they, we're not talking about the executive, the legislature, and, and the judiciary. You're talking about journalism. And in the world, they could make or break you. In the fourth estate in this country, think, things are too rough. Yeah. You know, when the West Indies beat England, <laughs> I mean, we haven't done that in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One lady said that she got marry a West Indian. And somebody asked in, back in the day, why you go marry a West Indian? She said, they don't beat nobody. <laughs> so, you know, talking about domestic violence, she now get beat up. All right? So, so she got marry a West Indian. But we're beating people now. Yeah. And, and for a nation, that should have been front page stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Front page. Yeah. Front page stuff. Yeah. But you see the fourth estate. These, the fourth estate, young people, you have to influence the fourth, the fourth estate. Yeah. We will move from the, uh, the daily yeah. verbiage and the daily diatribe um, to yeah. hope. Yes. Yeah. Find yeah. what Find is great. hope yeah. and focus on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe once we can do that, I mean, you mean the Georgetown Hustle don't do nothing good at the Georgetown Hustle? I'm trying to figure out every yeah. single day. Yeah. You have good things happening there. Yeah. Put the focus on those people, yeah. on those doctors who work beyond the call yeah. of duty, who save lives right in that same mm -hmm. Joshua yeah. Hostel, where, I mean, every death is a tragedy. But shift your focus a little bit, no? Show us the doctors who yeah. save in lives every yeah. day. Yeah. Show us yeah. the nurses who save in lives yeah. every day. Yeah. And move from sector to sector, mm -hmm. looking for signs of hope yeah. rather than signs of despair yes. or yeah. desperation. That's the one of the reasons why going to the education sector, look for signs of hope. Every sector, going to the agriculture sector, yeah. look for signs of hope wherever you are. The fourth estate, there needs to be a transformation, even in, in, in that area. Look at the political sector and give us the signs of hope. You know, show us things yeah. Yeah. that we will feel hopeful and about. They are things. You know, yeah. Let us know that, that <laughs> Dr. Kezia earned ABC. Let us know Martin earned ABC. And those things would be without, without um, contradiction. Give us the signs of hope. Yes. Huh? Choices from the rainforest. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set, reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.